chapter nine, patterns of inheritance. So the whole field of genetics, right? Genetics is the study of heredity, is how are traits or genes passed on from one generation to the next, right? What makes uh, the next generation look the way they do? Um, so let's look at the first slide here which is Gregor Mendel, who is responsible for um, our modern sort of uh, uh, knowledge of how traits are passed from one generation to the next. So there's a pattern of inheritance that he figured out. Um, and he did this very early on before we knew about genes, before we knew about DNA. So what he did was he studied the pea plant. So I'm gonna show you the, the pea plant itself. So here it is, right, it's a nice pretty flower. And the peas, you know, when the, the flowers will make seeds, so these are the seeds. And then the seeds will bloom into the flower, and it turns out that there are these um, traits, right? The color of the flower, the position of the flower, is it the middle or is it the end? The color of the seed, the shape of the seed, the shape of the pod, uh, the pod color, and how tall or, or short the plant is. So all these traits you could see with the eye, and they were inherited in a very reproducible pattern, um, a ratio that he figured out. And so he is known as sort of the father of modern genetics um, without even knowing what genes are, without even knowing what DNA is. And really these, this molecular knowledge that we have now, he did not know. Okay, so if you look at why did he study pea plants? Um, he studied them because they're easy to grow. The varieties that you can see here in this picture um, are very distinguishable. So it's easy to know if you have a white or purple or a flower that is in the middle of the stem or at the end of the stem. They can be easily manipulated to control pollination and reproduction and they can also be self-fertilized. So let's talk about those things. So we're going to look at the, the anatomy of a flower for just a second. So you need to understand that some flowers will come with both the male and female reproductive parts. So for example, this middle portion here, this is what contains the egg. Um, and then the sort of other uh, triangular yellow things here out here, those are actually what make the pollen, which contains the sperm cell. So in this flower, the pea plant flower, it can actually self-fertilize. So the sperm that are made in the anthers here or in the stamen, can dust the top of the female part, travel down, and fertilize itself. So you need to understand that when a flower does this, it's called self-fertilization. And if you look at letter B in your outline, breeding, um, if you look at number one, where it says true breeding plants, this is what that means, is that this plant can true breed. So self-fertilize, and that means that the offspring will be genetically very, very similar to the parent, right? Because the parent is basically not crossbreeding, they're self-fertilizing. Well, what is crossbreeding, right? So crossbreeding would be this um, scenario where you have two completely different plants or flowers and you're gonna take the sperm uh, or the pollen from one plant and then dust it onto the female carpal portion of the next plant. And so that way you, you can actually control what plants breed. So this is a controlled crossbreeding. Okay, so that's number two. You can actually chew, cross two different organisms. When you crossbreed, you'll create a hybrid, right? So we, you and I, we're all hybrids of our parents, right? Our two mom, our mom and dad created us a hybrid of them. So that's the same thing. If you crossbreed, you're creating a hybrid offspring. Okay, so um, let's see. So when you create uh, when you fertilize the, the flower, you're going to create seeds, and in this case, the seeds are in a pod, right, because we know peas come in a pod, and then uh, you plant the seeds, so this is what Gregor Mendel did, he planted the seeds, and then you can look at the traits that were presented in the offspring. So the terms you want to understand here in number three under breeding is that the parent generation is called the pea generation, so what you're starting off with the mom and the dad, right, or the two uh, flowers here, those are your pea generation. When the first generation of offspring, right, that's called F1. So the, the letter F stands for filial, which used to mean the word sons, old word for sons. So those are all the sons of the parents. 
Now, if we took a couple of these plants, remember this is not animals, so we're not like doing any incest or anything, but we can actually take two of these plants and we can crossbreed those. And then if we, again, looked at the seeds they created and then planted the seeds, that would be the F2 generation. So the F2 generation would mean that the F1 generation were the parents. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And here's our concept check, right? P plants can A, self-pollinate and cross-pollinate, B, only cross-pollinate, or oops, that should be C, produce without pollination, or reproduce without pollination. So the answer should be A, self-pollinate and cross-pollinate. Okay, so this is a, a look at the breeding uh, square that we're going to look at, but let's just go over the, um, the generation. So here's the P generation, it's their parent generation. When they mate, they're going to create a F1 generation, right? These are the hybrids. And if you cross two of these flowers, then you're going to get an F2 generation. Okay, so let's talk about the, the boxes and how you do this, in, um, but let's first talk about the different terms in letter C. What are the terms? A character is an inheritable feature. Uh, so I put in your outline eye color or hair color. Um, so it's basically what you inherit from your parents that you can, um, a, a lot of times you can see these features, characters. And then the trait, the word trait is used for the variation of a character. So uh, the character, if it's eye color, then you know that people have different color eyes. So they have different traits for that character, right? So we can have our trait might be brown eyes, your trait might be blue eyes or hazel eyes for uh, the character of eye color. Okay, and then there is a, the word allele. So this is the word I'm gonna be using most because this is the scientific word for a variation of a gene. So if you think of what you inherit, right? You inherit genes from your parents, but there are different forms of those genes out there right so the, the the different forms of those genes will be called alleles for so for example when we're looking at the pea plant right the flower color is inherited on a gene right so that character that's the reason why i put gene here is because you can think about characters as being genes you inherit a gene for the color of the flower but what variations are out there in the world for pea flowers and there's two there are purple flowers or there are white Sorry, there are purple alleles, so you can inherit the purple gene, or uh, the white allele, right, for the flower color. So in terms of the gene for flower color, there are two alleles in the world for pea plants, purple and white. And so uh, it turns out what, what shows up phenotypically, I'll get to these words, um, depends on what combination you you inherit. Okay, for another example before we move on is humans, right? Hemoglobin was that protein in our blood cells that we talked about previously. It has two alleles. So you inherit the normal allele or you can inherit the mutated form of the allele and then you get sickle cell, right? So these are the two alleles or the different types of hemoglobin genes out there in the world for us to inherit. Okay, so let's take a look at um, other terms here. So I went over this word before, homologous chromosomes, when we're talking about meiosis. And again, let's take a look at these, right? So let's pretend the red is the maternal chromosome. So we inherit one copy from our mom. We inherit the other copy, the paternal chromosome from our dad. The relationship here, again, is the word homologous or homologous chromosomes. So the homologous chromosomes are going to carry the same characters or genes um, in the same spots, right? Because literally they're the same, they're pretty much the same chromosome, except that the specific allele that was inherited or that, that was on that chromosome can be different because there are different alleles out there uh, for each um, of our genes. So the exact uh, location of a gene is called the loci, or it, the, this is actually a plural form of the word. The um, singular form is locus, okay? So L-O-C-U-S, if you want to write that down, is the singular form, and loci is plural. But you can see that each gene in this image has, we're looking at three different genes, 
They all have their specific location or loci on a specific chromosome. All right, so now let's get into the words homozygous and heterozygous. So if you're, so let's say that this is your chromosomes, right? You have one from your mom, one from your dad. This might be chromosome number one. So you have two chromosome number ones, one's from your mom, one's from your dad. Let's say that your mom and your dad both had the same allele for that specific gene, okay? It doesn't matter what the gene is for. Um, if it's this exact same allele, then that you are, the word is homozygous. You are homozygous for this gene, okay? Because they are exactly the same. This is an example of a heterozygous uh, relation, well, not relationship, but it's heterozygous. You have two different alleles. So let's say you inherited a big B allele from your mom and a little b allele from your dad. Uh, that is going to be heterozygous. So let me uh, give you uh, a heads up here. And then if you look here, little a, little a, this represents two of the same alleles at this spot. So this is a homozygous little a, little a. So let's talk about these letters for a second. Um, in genetics, uh, in this Mendelian sort of um, relationship with between genes, there is a dominant recessive relationship between two alleles. The capital letter is given to the dominant allele. A lowercase letter is given to the recessive allele. What dominant means, if you go to number 10, dominant means that if the allele will show up physically, and the other word is phenotypically. So if you look at number nine, phenotype is the physical appearance of the organism. So if you have a dominant allele, you only do need to inherit one copy of that allele, and it will show up physically. So let's put some, uh, use this in examples, and I think it'll make a lot more sense. So let's take a look at this, uh, this example here. So we have three examples of homologous chromosomes. In this pair, in individual A, the gene here is for blue eyes, and the uh, gene here, or sorry, I should say the allele. Allele here is for blue eyes, and the allele here is for brown eyes. So this relationship, we have two different alleles on this individual, or I should say this individual is heterozygous, letter B, right? Because we have two different alleles that you inherited. So this individual is going to be heterozygous, having two different ones, for the eye color gene or the eye color character, right? If you look at individual B, individual B has two brown alleles. They are the same. So we use the word homozygous. This person's homozygous for the brown allele. Individual C, this person is homozygous again for the blue allele, okay? So then this dominant recessive relationship I was trying to explain, um, in a relationship between two alleles, the brown eye and the blue eye allele, um, some alleles out there behave in a dominant recessive relationship, which means that brown tends to be the dominant one that means a person who inherits just one dominant allele, doesn't matter what the other one is, they will phenotypically or physically show up as that allele. So if uh, this brown is dominant, then and this person inherited just one brown allele, they're gonna have brown eyes because the dominant allele always shows up if you inherit just one copy of it. It doesn't matter that this is blue. You, this is gonna be hidden or masked by the dominant allele, okay? So in this example, individual B, then this person is also gonna have brown eyes, right? Because they have two copies of that brown allele. This person, individual C, will have blue eyes because there's no brown eye allele visible, right? They did not inherit any brown eye allele. They have two recessive alleles and they're gonna have blue eyes. So the only way a person will physically or phenotypically be blue eyed is if, is if they have two of those blue eyes alleles. So in other words, in order for you to show physically or phenotypically a recessive trait, you have to inherit 
two copies of that recessive allele because it's recessive, right? You have to have two copies of it in order to be phenotypically showing you that recessive trait. Um, all right, let's work with the next question here. Look at individual A, what, what, what color eyes does this person have? I answered this earlier, right? This person had blue eyes. I'm sorry, <laughs> brown eyes. Brown eyes because they inherited this dominant brown eye allele. The you know the the sort of definition of being dominant is that you're phenotypically going to show it. You're physically going to show it, if only by you know inheriting one copy. Okay, so um, these are some example, real life examples of some traits that have this dominant recessive relationship. So dominant traits are freckles, recessive traits are no freckles. So if you do not have freckles, then that means you inherited both recessive alleles. You have two recessive alleles for no freckles. Or you can say you're homozygous recessive, okay? Homozygous recessive. Widow's peak with a little peak down here on your forehead or no widow's peak, right? So let's say you have a widow's peak. That means you have to have inherited at least one because a widow's peak is dominant. One of your alleles has the widow's peak allele. The other one, it doesn't matter. It could be another dominant widow's peak allele or it could be the recessive form. But the whole thing about dominant alleles is that you only need one in order to physically or phenotypically show that trait, okay? So if you have a dominant trait, so let's move on to the third one. If you have a free earlobe versus an attached earlobe, you cannot say definitively what your genotype is. Okay, so let's take the word genotype, number eight. It's the genetic makeup of, your, of the organism. So what is this girl's genotype? We don't know because we basically just know that she has one, at least one dominant trait for the fear, free earlobe. We don't know the other one, right? It could be also another dominant allele or it could be the recessive. But here we know definitely her genotype. Her genotype is two recessive alleles. So she must be homozygous recessive. Okay, so her genotype, the word genotype means like what kind of genes do you have? Are you uh, homozygous recessive, homozygous dominant, or are you heterozygous, right? Meaning you have one dominant and one recessive allele. Okay, so let's do this and then we'll uh, end this portion of the video. So here's the genotype. The genotype is physically what combination of two alleles do you have? You could be heterozygous or homozygous recessive or homozygous dominant. That codes for your phenotype. What do you physically look like? So what is the genotype of a homozygous purple flower? Now, now we're getting into the capital P is dominant. The dominant allele here is, allele here is purple. Little p is recessive. Okay, so lowercase letters are recessive and the recessive trait is white. So what is the genotype of a homozygous purple flower? So what would you put in that blank? Well, the genotype is going to tell me that I need to answer in letters. So if I'm homozygous purple, that means I'm going to have big P, big P, right? So do two big P's. What is the genotype of a heterozygous purple flower? Heterozygous means I have two different alleles, but it's purple, so I need to have at least one big P because that's the dominant. So big P, and I know because it's heterozygous, I have to have a different one, so little p. So the, the answer here is going to be big P, little p. What is the genotype of a white flower? Well, I don't have to tell you if it's homozygous or heterozygous because white is recessive, and the only way an organism can phenotypically be white is if they inherited two little p's, right? The two recessives. So the answer here is little p, little p. What is the phenotype of big p, little p? What physically occurs in the organism when I inherit this genotype? Purple, right? That's the phenotype, purple flower. What is the phenotype of little p, little p? White. 
white flour, right? So that's that's how you would answer those questions. Okay, let's get pause here.